Hi, and welcome to another episode of Who's Zooming Who? This is actually going to be episode 10. Who would have thought uh, we'd actually manage to, that, that I would manage to have 10 conversations uh, with people. Joining me this week um, is, uh, I'm glad to say, what I hope is a new friend, because uh, I've never met um, Karina until this morning. Uh, Dr. Karina Ginty is the Teaching and Learning Officer, uh, and is also a lecturer in Teaching and Learning in the Galway Mayo Institute of Technology, GMIT. Um, and they, no more than any of the rest of the Institute of Technology around the country, suddenly found themselves thrown into this strange new world of online uh, delivery in, on the 12th of March as a result of COVID-19. We're going to talk a little bit about that. She actually had the good fortune to be involved in a project called Digital Ed that was just about to roll out uh, some fabulous resources for digital teaching um, and learning. And she's going to talk to us a little bit about that as well. So Karina, you're very welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much for your time and agreeing to um, be a, a, a guest. And um, perhaps you'd like to give us um, a brief introduction and, and talk to us a little bit about your role in GMIT. Okay. Uh, thanks very much, Ken, and delighted to be with you here today uh, in Waterford, virtually. Um, and for um, well done on the, the series. It's an excellent series so far, and I'm delighted to be number 10 in the series. <laughs> and looking forward to the conversation this morning with you. Um, my role is you said in GMIT, I, I look after teaching and learning development for the Institute, so it's a really interesting role and um, I'm involved with teaching staff as well. We run a postgraduate program in teaching and learning, so I lead a lot of modules and um, some uh, awards that we have at that stage in teaching and learning. So that's a fantastic um, opportunity to work with colleagues in developing teaching. We probably put a lot of emphasis on digital teaching and learning in recent years. Um, also my role um, is involved with managing lots of really good projects, uh, enhancement projects for teaching and learning and one in particular is the project that we're going to talk about this morning is the INO project which the CUA are, um, are involved with and GMIT is leading the whole digital teaching and learning aspect of this project which has resulted in digital ed which we'll chat about in a little while. Brilliant, and, th and thanks very much. Yeah, no, it was, it was definitely digital-led first caught my uh, attention, um, because number one, your, your, your site looks absolutely fantastic. What I'll do is actually, I'm going to bring it up and share it here now, because um, one of the nice things about doing a, a, a podcast is that uh, you, can see what's, you can see what's on my screen, uh, or, or I can see what's on yours. So I'm going to share that now uh, for people who might know it. So this, yeah. is, this, this is the digital ed, um, this will be the digital-led home screen. Um, so maybe you'd like to talk us through through the project. I keep saying yeah. dig, digital ed, but of course I noticed the name of the wider project. Yeah, and it's I suppose it's a component of um, many aspects of the project. So maybe if I give you a little bit of background on, on this. So back in January 2019, GMIT, along with our partners, IT Sligo and Letterkenny IT, we were awarded uh, one of the HEA Innovation and Transformation Award funds. And it's to the value of nearly three million euros uh, so it's a fantastic opportunity for us in the CUA uh, to build digital capabilities in the region over the next couple of years so this will form part of our technological university initiatives uh, around um, our submission as well so this HEA project is called iNote the idea is that we will transform, I suppose, higher education experiences in GMIT and IT Sligo and Letterkenny. And the aspect that GMIT is leading on this project is building digital teaching and learning capabilities. So we would have a team of uh, in Galway. So within GMIT Teaching and Learning Office, we would lead out on the development of this initiative for the CUA. And we would have established a digital education team, which has colleagues um, including Annette Cosgrove, uh, one of my colleagues who is a lecturer in technology enhanced learning. I have another uh, member of the team, Orla Skehel. <coughs> Orla Skehel is a learning technologist teaching and learning in GMIT and she joined the team last year as a result of the funding that we received. We also have Jessica Duffy, a member of the team who's coordinating the project with us. And we have colleagues, Moraine Noon, who's based in IT Sligo with Gavin Clinch, and they're feeding into the project as well. And we have Patricia O'Doherty, who's based in Letterkenny. So she forms part of the team as well. 
and <coughs> what a wider group has been established as a digital champion network, which I'll talk about in a few moments. But the whole idea is that we're, we're building digital capabilities and pedagogic expertise so that we are well equipped to design and deliver flexible online learning programs into the future. Now, little did we know <laughs> that COVID was going to happen. And I know we're going to touch on that this morning, but it, it was really good timing, I must say, with digital ed. And we were chatting about this before, Ken. Like the day we uh, went live with the digital ed platform was the day uh, before we closed the doors across the whole country in higher education. And we all went online in a hurry. So in response to that, we, we, were, we were well equipped uh, to deal with the crisis at hand and to get in there and support colleagues. And uh, we worked collaboratively together through the COA initiative as well to help colleagues. Uh, um, but we can talk about that in a little while. Maybe, do you want me to talk a little bit about the features of the digital ed platform? Would that be? Would yeah, that'd, be, that'd be fantastic. As, as yeah. it, it looks absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah. and, 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 I, and I'm very, I'm very envious of the fact that um, you had this sort of ready to, to, to pull like, a, like, the, like the proverbial rabbit from a hat on, on the 12th of uh, on the 12th of March um, when we got the, the news yeah. that we had to close down. And I'm also very very impressed and um, you obviously have a much better head than I have for names um, because you, you, you have an impressive list of um, people working with you across all three institutes um, yes. in, in, in the project and yes. I think that um, you know looking at the quality yeah, of the work, we're very, Yeah we're very fortunate um, to have a really good steering group also. So we have some external advisors and we've been very lucky to work with New York State University. So I know uh, Meg Bank is a friend of Waterford IT in the past, Professor Meg Bank. And um, so they have been fantastic to, uh, to help us in kind of honing our online courses to help staff develop digital teaching and learning skills, looking at instructional design models and teaching and learning design models, and the whole pedagogy aspect of digital teaching and learning. So Alexandra Pickett is another lady in SUNY that has been fantastic support to us. Um, and then also we have the National Forum for Teaching and Learning, um, Dr. Terry McGuire and Dr. Catherine Cronin. Uh, we've sought advice from them through a steering group uh, forum. And we also have Thea in Ireland um, uh, who have fed into the process in relation to the quality aspect of the project. So we've been very fortunate, a really strong um, advisory group has been established with national, international and local, local interests feeding through, which is super. Yeah. So um, maybe if I show you a little bit, if we scroll down a little bit, we can look at the buttons that are available on the platform. Now saying this, I know we developed this for, for everyone, it's the CUA, but the reality is it's live online and anybody across the country or anyone internationally can come in and look at digital ed and they're more than welcome to explore all of the resources that we're populating in here. Um, there's cer certain tools that, that are restricted access. So for example, if we look at a improve your digital skills, that is a really new, neat tool that we have uh, set up in partnership with JISC. So you're probably familiar with JISC in the UK and yeah. they've done fantastic work for years with higher education institutes on you know, building digital capabilities and looking at the, you know, the, the infrastructure in, for digital education. So we've worked with them in um, uh, embedding a really nice uh, digital discovery tool that they have in place. And we felt this was an excellent tool for whether you were working as a lecturer or in professional services, that you could access this tool. And uh, it would, it's like a self-assessment tool and it would give you um, uh, a really nice picture as to where you are under five digital capabilities. Okay, Fantastic. you kind of see your strengths and your weaknesses, perhaps, yes. or where I need to invest a little bit more time in my digital development. So we love this tool, and for us, it's giving us a really nice kind of baseline data as we launch digital ed, and we get colleagues to explore and update the, you know, to to, to work out pathways for their development. So, again, we have. Uh, we've about 200 staff in GMIT that have engaged with the tool so far. And similarly in Sligo and Letter Kenny, they're also engaging with it. So over the next few months, we hope we'll have a nice picture to share on how we're building during, particularly during this COVID crisis, uh, which is quite challenging for us all. Um, another feature there, if you want to click on the digital discovery, or sorry, digital resources directory button, this is a really neat mm -hmm. uh, 
So yeah. Can, oh, that's discovery tool. Okay. It's but a digital resources. Can, yeah. yeah just click on it. digital resources. You can just click on the top button. Uh, yeah. No, no, that's discovery too. Digital yeah. resources. No, that's just, is this one? Yeah. You have one uh, of the, the directory of, of tools and things like that. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. So uh, in the digital resources directory, this is where our champions came into play. Uh, we established a champion network just before Christmas across the CUA. And we brought together lectures from discipline, various disciplines in Letterkenny IT, IT Sligo and in GMIT. And we set them up in a team group, like a digital education forum. And we got them to review about 20 digital resources. And if you click on any of them there, what's nice about them is you get that lovely peer review from a colleague or somebody that works within the community of the CUA. So for example, here we have one that Isabel has reviewed and it's about Mentimeter and teachers. We gave them a, like a, um, a quality group or, you know, a review to rate it in relation to finality and, and all of that. It's a little bit that you can press on. Uh, so colleagues have found, and particularly colleagues that are moving along in development of their digital skills and perhaps they're at level to development stage, they like to be a bit more adventurous and starting Padlet and other Mentimeter and Socrative and other neat resources that are available in the TEL space. So um, yeah, so if we go back, if you click on Digital Ed there again, Ken, you know the button, Digital Ed there, the main button, the home page. Yes, yeah. the logo. Oh yeah, on the logo in the there. corner, left corner. Yeah, it'll bring us back to the home. And yeah, and uh, so the discovery tool is fantastic. Anybody, you know, can go in and look at the discovery tool, and you get a really good idea as to um, uh, you know what's available and what's been peer reviewed. So another feature, what we've put a lot of work into, um, which colleagues are really appreciating, is the whole area of the, the learning pathways. So we have a Moodle platform that we um, host teaching and learning courses on, and it's called CPD Learn Online. So we actually have embedded some really nice courses that staff can take. And one course in particular um, in the academic pathway we developed with SUNY and it's called Digital Teaching and Learning. And so we have staff actively engaging with that course and self-directed, you can do it over five to six hours and you can do it over a long period of time or a short period of time. And, um, you know, again, it's giving us um, some nice opportunities uh, for, for staff to develop their skills further. Another one is Open Teach that we've popped in here. And I know you chatted to Orna Farrell, um, a couple of weeks ago, Orna, who's in DCU. Yes. So uh, we've managed, Orna, Orna created a lovely course for the sector. So we've actually put that in our suite in digital ed for staff. We encourage staff to do Orna's course, Open Teach, as part of, yeah. And then Microsoft Education, you know, in Ireland as well. Um, Stephen Howell has been very generous with his time as well in sharing resources. And we're encouraging staff to do those digital badges yes. for Microsoft. Uh, because we're all on Office 365, yeah. Microsoft 365, and we want to encourage staff to engage with things like Flipgrid and all these other resources. And so that's part of our digital ed uh, development platform. We've embedded those Microsoft badges in there as well, which has been super. So um, let me see, is there anything else? Do you have any questions on that? No, no, it, 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 it looks, um, I, I'm almost... Uh, looking forward to, 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 to having the excuse to, to start poking around um, a bit more um, after, after our conversation um, because I, I, I had been aware of digital ed and I saw you tweeting maybe about it a couple, a couple of weeks ago and you had a number of seminars or webinars on and things like that um, but just didn't get a chance to have a look at it but now, now that you've sold it to me um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to, 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 yeah. to, 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 to looking on. So uh, I mean, obviously, I'm aware that this is something that she developed um, for the Connacht Cluster Alliance uh, and, and, and your partners in IT Sligo and, and Letterkenny. For, for the broader um, Irish HDI community, or, or, or that, how, how much, how much of, of these resources are available um, uh, to, 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 to 
us, us mere mortals in, in Waterford or, or, or anywhere else for that matter. Oh, absolutely. Um, uh, uh, so if we, if you look down a little bit here and I'll, I'll explain what's kind of CUA related sure. and what's open to anybody in the country. Um, if I just see the buttons here. So as I said, the digital skills tool uh, that we've set up with JISC, which comes under the button, are you ready to teach online or improve your digital skills? That is uh, exclusive to the CUA and we have some digital dashboards, this kind of learning analytics um, uh, built into the back end of that. So that's important for us for our I know project because we want to get a picture of how we're developing over the next couple of years. So also the digital champions idea, um, again, that is a network that has been established between the CUA that we're working on over the next three, three years, see profiles of the champions champions in there, but there's other institutes in the country if they want to adapt this whole digital learning champions approach and, and start building out a network of experts who um, are strong in tell skills um, in their, and, you know, and what we're finding now, particularly with the COVID climate that we're in, and if we are a blended and online learning institute in the next academic year, I feel our the digital champions are going to play a really key mentoring role um uh, play a key mentoring role with within their academic departments in encouraging their own discipline and their own community of practice to engage yeah. with uh, with these all these new approaches for online teaching um now i would say the digital stories tool there that button that's available to anybody can access that in the in the country or anywhere in the world and we're going to do a bit more work on that next year where we want to categorize those digital stories so we have maybe a theme that are just around assessment perhaps another theme of stories that's just around student engagement or less or, or others that are just around tell tools um uh, technology and enhanced learning tools so at the moment we've about to imagine we went live in a hurry on march 12th and but uh, there's a nice collection of stories there but we've a bit of work to do on categorizing them in the future and um, what else is available the digital resources directory that absolutely is open to anybody can look at that and if you if you have an idea and if you'd like to submit a digital resources review that you've come across um, we'd love to hear from you and you can submit that live on the system fantastic and, yeah so then we also have the join the community button um, so again, obviously that's one of our key objectives within the INO project is to build a digital teaching and learning community within the CUA. So we've put a bit of emphasis on getting colleagues to engage with learning pathways, you know, online courses. We've got set up a team site now that's called a digital education forum for the CUA. And that's, you know, it's, you're, you're familiar, Ken, with the team site. So we have, we have people that have joined, become members, they've contributed. We've run live clinics together, you know, live clinics during COVID where we put panels together in the CUA and we supported each other in relation to themes of assessment or uh, digital tools that we're exploring in our teaching or how generally we were coping with just going online. Sure. <laughs> like, yeah, so that's worked well with the community aspect. And certainly our workshops, we've made them open. Um, you probably are familiar with the Digital Ed series, uh, the first webinar series that we yes. launched in May. Uh, or end of April, beginning of May. So we let that open to anybody in the country at the time. So we had an online, you know, Eventbrite booking platform. So um, obviously it was catering for our CUA colleagues, but we were able through the online system, through the webinar system, to bring in more people. Of course. Which was great. I, 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 yeah. And I think that the, one, of, one of the really nice things, and I think uh, one of our previous guests on the podcast, and you, you mentioned you mentioned her name there earlier, Catherine Cronin, alluded to when she spoke about um, OER and, and, and Creative Commons and, and yes. openly licensed tools. Once, once something is available digitally, you can share it with somebody else and, and it's not like you're, you're giving away the, the, the copy that you have. You, you get to still keep uh, you get to still keep what you have your, with yourself. The other thing that's really interesting there, and, and we've done some made some tentative steps, I suppose, in establishing a community of practice um, amongst our academics um, that are sort of engaged in technology enhanced learning in, in Waterford. And part of the reason or part of our motivation for doing that was um, as, a, as a TELS centre um, where we were running training um, fairly frequently, some with success, some with maybe less successful. Um, we found it far more powerful um, if we could get one of our colleagues to, to say, well, this is what I do. 
um, than than for us to be sort of saying these these are the things you need to do. Um, and some of it even came from um, if they saw somebody else doing it, they kind of said, "Well, sure, if they can do it, I can do it." Um, and it's 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 a bit like the you know, if you can see it, you can be it um, philosophy that that. You, you, your sort of professional practice gets driven on by by seeing what um, what 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 other people what other people do, but no, the site looks absolutely fantastic and um, it looks to be really really well well considered and um, all of the bits um, look to 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 offer um, rich material. Um, even the, the 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 digital resources directory. Um, the reason I. I clicked on the Mentimeter one there was that I was actually talking to somebody this morning about Mentimeter. So um, <laughs> I, I know exactly where I'm going to be sending them um, uh, later in the afternoon when I send them on a link um, to, yes. find out, uh, to find out more about it. So I'm only yeah. sorry I didn't know about it um, earlier this morning. I could have answered the email uh, slightly, slightly quicker. Yeah. And you know, it's interesting what you said there about colleagues really like things being demonstrated to them by other colleagues, you know, and that's what we found with the whole digital champion idea that it's, it's, it's really powerful when you hear from your peer who teaches in your own discipline or even in another discipline in the, in, in the Institute. And you just learn from others, you learn by doing and showing with each, you know, um, if you get that endorsement from a colleague, you get bravery then that I'm going to try this out. Annette has showed me this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to try this. So we found uh, that approach works really well. And we want to continue that show and tell approach yes. uh, as we do further develop digital ed. So obviously we have another nearly, well, under two years left of this project. So um, one of the, the, I suppose, our main objectives over the next academic year is getting staff engaged with the learning pathways. Now it's happened, it's happening quicker than we expected because of the situation that we're in with COVID. But uh, we want to build on that and we don't want people to develop. We have to be careful as well as we've gone in, as, as we've gone online in a hurry with COVID, we don't want um, uh, perhaps poor practices developing in relation to online teaching and learning, because as you know, Ken, online teaching is so different sure. to, to um, the classroom based teaching. And you've heard that from Orna as well in her yes. publications. So uh, we have to be we have to be careful that we're ensuring that people develop good practice and they engage with the, the digital pedagogy aspect as well. And that's something that we're really going yeah. to be promoting over the next year or two. Absolutely. I'm going to stop sharing the screen now again so as we yeah, can get back, 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 yeah. back into the room. But no, th thanks, Emilia, for, for, for walking us through that. And, and as I said, it looks uh, like a, a, an incredibly rich and, and detailed and fabulous resource. Um, for not just yourselves in, in obviously GMIT and IT Sligo and, and Letterkenny, but for, for uh, the wider uh, the wider community as well. It's interesting as you as you just touched on um, the next academic year and what things are possibly going to yeah. uh, look like or be like. And uh, you're absolutely right, of course, that um, th th there there is a very real danger that because we managed to get through in our case three weeks uh, of at the end of a semester um, last year um, that people feel that sure look we've done online now so you know what, 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 what more do we need what more do we need to do um, I, I'm acutely aware I suppose of the fact that it's it's a very different proposition to finish out something online than it is to start something up online um, and, and and you know e even in terms of of, of how you get acclimatized or how the students get acclimatized maybe you'd, you'd have some, some thoughts or some ideas of yourself on and what what do you think um semester one 2020 2021 20, is, is possibly going to look like at this remove and, and we won't hold you to any of this because it, it could yeah. well change by it could well all change by september again so yeah well i think uh we're already kind of pre-planning for it and we we see okay is there going to be a cure for COVID? Uh, no we're not going to see that coming in immediately so of course we have to plan ahead and one of the things that we've set up in gmit is we put together a group it's called bolt it's a bolt initiative and it brings together expertise from across the institute and different services and what we're doing is we're kind of preempting or pre-planning as to what to expect and how to prepare the institute 
So on the back of the Digital Ed series, what we've launched this June is a whole digital teaching and learning program once again, building on digital ed and the resources, but calling it, you know, this bold initiative and this series for the Institute, because we need to demonstrate to staff that there is support there and that we hear them and we, we need to be prepared. Uh, we need to get our systems in order and we need to ensure that our students are going to have all the supports that they need. So uh, collectively as a team, the Institute is working on a student services kind of SharePoint platform for colleagues. Uh, we're also looking at a whole digital teaching and learning support program for colleagues, but we're particularly focusing on those that are at basic level one, because, you know, we've lots of really fabulous champions in the Institute. But we have to be conscious that our, a lot of our staff that went online in a hurry, this is not what they signed up for, you know? This is an emergency that they have, uh, and they have you know, been incredible how they've approached it and uh, what they have done to support students and, and all of that. But we need to make sure that we mind and protect our colleagues and we give them the tools to engage at a very basic level to ensure that the quality of the learning experience for the students will be as good as we can give them, you know, in the, in the, cir in the circumstances that we're in. So there's a lot of work going on there. So um, in relation to that, so that's really positive. Also, I feel the work that we're doing with iNote, we need to build on that. You know, uh, we started with the digital ed program and I think we've a lot to learn from each other in the CUA and working collaboratively together. So through the CUA network and through the digital ed and the iNote project, we will begin to um, uh, build out that digital community that will support each other. And running again, what I have found very useful is the clinics, the panel clinics and having that opportunity for staff to come in and troubleshoot ideas or approaches. Um, other things, you know, we're learning lessons as well from like the likes of New York State University. They've been in this business for long before any of us were. And uh, I, 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 I love some of the resources and guidebooks and materials that they've developed for uh, learning design and uh, what they've done for student support. So certainly we're looking at best practice internationally and, and nationally. And uh, as I said, we also a great partner in IT Sligo. They've been in the online teaching world for longer than we have. So they've been fantastic with, um, you know, working through ideas and getting feedback from them. But, um, but, but there's a lot to do. Another thing that we've done, that we're doing, which is really important, uh, we're about to launch it later this week. We're working in partnership uh, with the Students Union and to capture opinions from students on how we're doing. How did COVID so far, do you know the learning experience go for you? And do you have solutions or ideas, students, that you can suggest to us? How we, so I think that's really, really important to get the student voice in there as okay. we prepare for the winter and the autumn. And have you had much of that feedback, even anecdotally, well, to date? Yeah, so we're so we've had uh, we've had feedback through uh, the students' union and through the various representative groups, and there has been surveys. But this we're doing this really special engagement tool. It's we're working with uh, a company that's based in DCU. They're called Opinion X, mm -hmm. and uh, they did they just did a project for NSTEP for the whole country. Right. where they looked at uh, student engagement and they did a similar project in DCU. So we're just about to launch that with them on Friday. And we'll have that open for about 10 days for students to give their feedback. So I really hope that, you know, that's going to give us really rich data mm -hmm. on helping plan. And, you know, students will have great ideas on how to resolve yeah. some of the, the issues we're battling with, you know. Yeah, so no, I look forward I, to that. The, 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 the kind of feedback that we've got now, um, we are running a, an assessment process as we do every year. I haven't seen the results of, of, of that yet, but certainly the anecdotal feedback we've got from most people um, has been uh, positive. Um, but but I'm I'm acutely aware also as well that you know we're we're in a an emergency situation, and and I think people will give you a certain sort of latitude uh, because of that. Um, you know, no more than you mentioned there that this wasn't what some of your lecturing colleagues signed up for. It certainly wasn't what most of our students signed up for. Um, no. And um, we have been doing, we've looked at sort of high level um, analytics in terms of engagement with the LMS and things like that, just to see 
you know, was it working the way it was supposed to work? Were people engaging with it or were they just completely detached? And yeah. for, for the most part, um, we were pleasantly surprised to find out um, that they were um, because, you know, we, we had no way of knowing beforehand uh, or no way of predicting beforehand whether that was was going to be um, the case. Um, but, you know, it, it's it's useful looking back on it now that, um, that it seems to have been maybe better than we might have feared uh, it, it was going to be. Having said that, as I said, this was an emergency response. We do have a couple of months now before um, September rolls around again. And um, as well as dealing with our existing students, there will be a group of new students coming in who, exactly. um, who, who, who went through their own trials and tribulations with the leaving cert. Um, so it'll be, you know, I think that's going to present a, a unique um, set of challenges um, in, in how that's how, how that's managed as well. But yeah. no, I, I mean, look, all of, all of what you're doing, um, I love the name of your committee, Bolt. It sounds very, um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> sounds very action oriented. I like it. You know, it's it's it's, yeah. it, it's a strong name. Um, yeah. And, and you know, some, some of the things that, you know, learning analytics is so important, and I know our IT services have been capturing data in relation to teams engagement has got up 500% and, uh, and just in relation to what's happening on the virtual learning environment. One of the things we're looking at as well is the team, the Moodle team, and even seeing can we help staff in, in relation to, um, you know, the, the Moodle um, course descriptor, you know, yes. the actual template. So we're looking at that as well to see, uh, I think that would be really helpful for even new lecturers coming into the Institute if they had a template to work on. Yes. And um, so, and other things that are really important, we've, the first year experience is gonna be crucial. You know, we could have students coming in as blended learners uh, starting at the end of September. And one of, one of the pieces of work that's going on at the moment is looking at how can we deliver induction and orientation yeah. virtually and um, there's been some great work going on there in the background. They, our marketing team in GMIT put together an excellent kind of virtual open day uh, app tool that worked very oh, yeah. well and it ran every Friday and you'd have live sessions and it's still, I think it's called uh, gmit.e slash open day. I think that's a virtual open day. But building on that and seeing how can we create this virtual space for sure. orientation and induction, not just for first years, but also for the other years as well. It's going yeah, to I, 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 I know, I, and um, he won't mind me sharing it with you because I know he wants to share it wider. Anyway, um, a colleague of mine, uh, Pete uh, Winbert, who works with me in Centre for Technology and Advanced Learning in WIT, is doing quite a bit of work at the moment on um, using Microsoft Teams as a student communication platform. So um, the thinking being that, uh, you know, in an online environment, students don't necessarily have the opportunity to grab a cup of coffee together and have those kind of uh, brief exchanges within class or outside the classroom door. So it's trying to give them an online space um, where they can communicate uh, like that. We, we have uh, so I suppose some of the driving behind that came from we have a, a, a non, fully online higher diploma in science and computer science that because it's a, an IT program uses uh, Slack which would be kind of an industry standard uh, tool for uh, oh, yeah. IT companies uh, and it's used very very heavily for communication so it's borrowing on our experiences on that but using Teams um, as the Slack channel because we have that um, available for all students um, and integrating that uh, into Moodle um, as the kind of communications uh, conduit um, to facilitate um, not just not just lecture student communication but student student communication and not just the kind of formal stuff the the, the informal um, ad hoc stuff as well and, and I do think those kind of things are uh, and that sort of deliberate thing that you have to think more about um, it is going to come more to the fore as we come back in September because there's lots of things you take you take for granted because of the physical surroundings that you find yourself in that now you don't have the comfort of, of relying on those anymore you have to be far more um, detailed maybe in, in, in how you explain yourself or how you, you, you help people navigate uh, navigate through the uh, through the learning material but you know yeah. for, for, for the most part uh, I suppose um, Maybe it's too early to, to tell 
just now, but I know our course and exam boards are just finished and there hasn't been any horror stories that, or if there, if there has, I haven't heard them. Um, uh, they, ha they, they, they haven't they haven't shared them and for the most part it seems to have, and and that seems to be the like i as i said this is the the, the uh you're 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 the tenth person i've spoken to on uh who's Umi who and most of the responses from people uh, working in institutes has been exactly that that's you know this it wasn't ideal but we, we, we managed to, to 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 kind of pull it out of the fire to a certain extent yeah i must say that it has been amazing to see the response, you know, um, uh, everybody got behind the situation and who would have thought that if you would ask me <laughs> in January, the whole country would be online teaching uh, uh, in higher education. I would never have believed it. So uh, to think what we ended up, we walked out the door on March 12th and everybody had to embrace online teaching you know um it's ev and everyone did they did that and uh, the support has been there it's been phenomenal you know to see how people have engaged with the whole you know uh, engagement with the tools but also their own self-development mm -hmm. uh, they, they're hungry to learn more it's incredible yeah i i i, I think people probably surprised themselves uh, and i remember making this comment on, on a tweet way back when that um I, I think people would find that at a basic level, and I'm not talking about you know very detailed course design and a very detailed online pedagogy, but you kind of ha everyone has to start somewhere. And at a basic level, um, it's probably not as hard as people thought it was, uh, and it's probably not as bad as they feared it was either. Um, so I think when you, when you start from from that bar, you know, and it's and it's and it, it, at the risk of repeating myself again, I know I've said this on another one of these podcasts before. Yeah. You know, at least when you have something done, you can make it better. You, you can't edit a blank page, and you know when, yeah. when when you have some work done, you know now now we've got to maybe a baseline level. Now it's it's a matter of well, what can we do to improve that? And, yeah. Know, what, what are just, the yeah. No. No. Absolutely. I just even on that point of improvement, one of the things that we have uh, populated on digital ed since the whole COVID crisis is we have a suite of really good blog entries and articles. It's on one of the links on the site. I think it's called uh, the blog, uh, Digital Ed Blog. But uh, so if anybody wants to share a story, by all means, they can submit a story. But even the stories that have been shared so far about getting online in a hurry, what you need, you know, to teach online, mm -hmm. students, what you need to be successful online. We've looked at some really nice tools that will help you engage students mm -hmm. online. This phenomenal um, advice that's been given by colleagues. Um, so that's available for anybody to have a look at. Yeah, yeah, we found I, it's been comforting to read it. I know? I, I know that that was that one of the really nice things I thought at the very start of all this back in, back in March. Um, there were so many people coming forward and, and sharing really good um re really good ideas and really good tools and really good resources and so much so at this stage um we're I'm, overloaded I, I, yeah i'm almost overwhelmed by it uh, by, by it again but look i suppose that that, that that's it that's a good um it's a good that, thing it's a good it's a good problem to have i know it's a good problem yeah I, i'm conscious of how much of your uh time i'm have to take it out of your 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 very very busy day um, and I can see exactly why it's so busy when I when I see the fabulous resource that digital led and, and all of the other things we spoke about are um, I've said this before and I say it again uh, time absolutely does fly when, when you're having fun we've been talking for almost 38 minutes would you believe um, so it, it, it really it really flies by all that remains for me to say is Dr. Krita Kinty thank you very much for your time and it's an absolute pleasure having you on the on the podcast well, thank you so much, Ken. And um, hopefully you'll come to Galway someday and we can meet in person properly absolutely, absolutely. and share stories. Yes, yes, 100%. <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks very much. Thank you.